I grew up traveling with my parents to Asia every couple of years, but my mom worked for the airlines and um, they would make trips over to Asia to collect antiques. Um, and we would go over and they, they used it as a way to kind of fund their vacations. So they would first start by going to Thailand and then they'd go deeper into Cambodia and Myanmar to find Asian antiques to bring back to Seattle. Um, and so I grew up with the kind of vocabulary of antiquities and finding old things and, and looking for beauty in, in rough kind of places. Um, and I would say that, that that was the earliest foundation of my artistic career. I make work every day, and I've made work almost every day since I've been 19. So it's been a while. Um, and I think that it's the process of refining it bit by bit, slowly getting better every day, making incremental improvements is the part that, that I enjoy the most. So just refining the craft, getting a little bit better. I, I see art as a kind of puzzle and it's a million pieces that have to kind of come together and that's when it fits. It fits really well, but all those pieces have to be refined individually in order for it to fit into one piece. Certain people are drawn to certain materials, um, whether they are drawn to it from the beauty or if they're drawn to it because they have the temperament for that thing. Um, so it's some kind of combination. I mean, I, I feel like ceramic um, and art found me as much as I, I found it. Well, I, I chose ceramic. Um, which I kind of thought, well, a ceramic major at University of Washington, that seems like kind of a, a funny thing to go and do, but it was like all the, all the best professors were in the ceramic program and all the energy seemed to be there, so I, I just, I sort of followed the energy and I thought, okay, wow, this, there's some really great artists, Akio Takamori, Doug Jack, and uh, Jamie Walker, and they were these excellent ceramic artists, and I, I went down that path and I, I fell in love with every aspect of it and then it also kind of connected because ceramic is such a traditional art form it kind of connected to that past like with the with the antiques and, and stuff and then it also connected to my youth in Asia which is um, you know the ceramic tradition and porcelain tradition in particular comes from from Asia so it's, it's kind of a way to reconnect with what I had from the past and then to kind of learn about this new art form and sculpture I don't know I've always kind of been interested in building things and the engineering aspect of it so I think uh, sculpture was pretty well suited for for what I was interested in when I was 18 I, I graduated from college two years early uh, or I had two years of college and so I wanted to take a year to kind of figure out what it was that I wanted to do with my life and um, I decided that I knew that coming to Asia would be um, not too expensive and I saved up I sold my car and I saved up a few thousand dollars and I thought okay well I'd, I'd kind of go there take a gap year and think about what I wanted to do um, and that became nine months of reading and traveling through Asia, thinking about, okay, what, what was it that I wanted to do? Um, and then I decided, at that point, I decided on, on sculpture because I saw how great of a program the University of Washington had. And then um, after that, I, I w went through that University of Washington program. I had a job working for architects and artists um, for a brief period after graduating, and then I saved up a, a little nest egg again, and I thought, okay, well, I could do nine months in Asia, or or and kind of focus on my art again, or I could do maybe two months in Seattle. And so I came out here to Thailand, and uh, I've been here eight years, um, back and forth, but primarily here, and uh, just the tradition of ceramics, the access to material, the craftsmen here are amazing. Um, it, they have the same standard of craft as, you know, Rome or, or 
Seattle for sure. Um, just talented, talented people, a great art scene, um, and really welcoming. I think that the thing I find most interesting is it's the kind of, it's the overlap and one of the highest forms of overlap between East and West. So it was a very early, um, a very early communication was through porcelain and through art, um, but particularly ceramic. At a point in time, porcelain was worth as much as gold in, in Europe. And so if you kind of trace things back to its origin uh, of the communication between East and West, I, I think that porcelain was one of the earliest uh, one of the earliest forms of communication. They were sending things and there were scientists in Europe who were trying to formulate their own version of porcelain which they hadn't developed how to make yet and just that story kind of going back to the beginning of things I think maybe that I can trace to to my childhood with antiques it's, it's you can do that with the medium it's kind of like going going back to this the very beginning of East and West. So sometimes um, I like to use darker imagery in my work, um, and I think that's because if you look for beauty in places that you don't traditionally find it, I, I think it, you can find things that people maybe missed. So something really beautiful like the carapace of a beetle or something like that has a form that when you break it down to its individual elements has the sort of streamlinedness of a Ferrari. And that kind of beauty is maybe something where the normally people will look to a flower or something like that, something that's already beautiful and try to re-represent it. But I think by looking in, in places that people didn't traditionally look and, and finding beauty in some dark thing, uh, like a skull or some kind of form like that, you can, you can present beauty in, in ways that give a kind of contrast and, and make people think about the work. So I, I try to find the line in my art practice between one side, that's the more utilitarian things, the cups and incense burners and that kind of thing, and the more fine art side, which is a little bit higher quality material and a little bit more attention to detail. So those two things, uh, I think that they're equally important. Um, I, I really like the idea of some piece of art that you could use every day, that you can wake up and have your coffee with a piece of art, and it makes it so it's a little bit more accessible. It's something that you can kind of bond with in, in a way that's different than just being removed from an art piece that that's hangs on your wall that you see every day, but maybe, maybe you don't touch it, maybe you don't feel it. You know, that, that idea of something that's really intimate, some cup or something that's really beautifully crafted that you actually have to put to your mouth is, is, is interesting because you're bonding with it in, in a way that's more, uh, that's a little bit closer. I think even in the utilitarian work that there still can be like a philosophical concept behind it. Um, and I think that that's what makes, you can make a piece of art that people, people can you know, relate to and incorporate into their life. You can kind of get lost in like the, the mundaneness of life, and sometimes I think it's it's good to reflect a little bit. And if there's a way to, if there's a way to, I don't want to say force people to do that, but if it can be a kind of interesting question that's posed, uh, I I do think good art usually comes in the form of a question not an answer. Everything starts as a as a either an idea or a question and then it kind of turns into an, an object. Um, that's usually the process so there'll be something usually I'm interested in or haven't quite worked out yet some kind of philosophical idea that I'd like to meditate on and then I do that over the course of making the piece. So that's kind of how the creative process works for me. And um, I would say that's the only thing that connects everything um, as far as everything that I've made.
So, yeah, I think that there's a sliding scale between objects. I think that there's, there's something like um, a mass-produced object, um, and they, they can be very clean and very perfect, but there's a kind of lack of soulness to it. And so you're able to, I think, feel that something is unique or something that's handmade or something that's crafted by an individual. Um, I think it's in its imperfections. Um, in, in the way that it's made, so that's been something that, that there has to be like an element of chaos in what what you make too, which ceramic has plenty of chaos that you have to manage, but to sort of curate that chaos in a way that that I think people can sense, even if it is on a sort of uh, intuitive sense, I think they kind of know, okay, well, this isn't something you could buy at, at Walmart, you know, there's plenty of ceramics there that's not expensive, but how could you make something that it, it has a feeling of a, a little bit of that, whatever that power is of being handmade, and I, I think people can sense that on some on some kind of level. Everything is highly detailed, and even though you use something like a mold, which sounds like it's easy, there's a tremendous amount of detail that goes into re-sculpting. So the mold will leave lines and if you want if you want to make something that looks like it wasn't produced from a mold, the only way to do that is to spend a lot of time with it in your hands. And so each piece takes hours to make um, between the glazing process and the hand detailing process. Um, so that that's something that I, I don't think it's really scalable. Um, it's something that requires an artist to make every every piece. So um, I, I have some people who help me during some parts of the process, but the actual artistic parts I, I, I try to do all myself. Any ceramic artist knows that there, there is the challenge of like the kiln gods, which you just can't control sometimes. And um, I've seen it happen to artists who are a whole lot more skilled and and um, I've been doing it a lot longer than I have, where sometimes you just get a bad firing, sometimes you get a bad batch of clay, sometimes you get some, something like on that level, which is can be very heartbreaking. Ceramic is a little kind of heartbreaking material. Um, it tends to, when it's good, it, it works really well, but it keeps you on your toes for sure. Like sometimes you'll go through this tremendous effort of, of making whole, Collection and then you, your prototype comes out perfectly and then you go to fire it again and oh, you just lost six months of work. In its base form, I can't think of anything that's more rudimentary, more chaotic than ceramic. It comes and it's just a ball of mud, essentially. And then you kind of, and, and maybe, I mean, it probably relates to the Adam and Eve story of being crafted from the mud uh, because it is the most base form and then creating that into something that is well crafted or something that makes sense or something that's realistic it's a very labor-intensive process and um, but you kind of you're kind of overcoming that chaos too sort of embracing it in one hand and then overcoming it in another From the time I was maybe 21 to the time I was 24, I used to work down in, in the industrial district, Soto, Seattle. And you'd be down there and I'd go to all the different um, different craftspeople. I worked for an architect. And so I'd have to make ceramics sometimes, I'd have to make wood sometimes, I'd have to make metal sometimes. And you'd meet these old guys uh, and they were 50 and they'd... Or, 60, 70 maybe even, and they would work with the materials for their whole life. And they sort of become like the material. And I always thought that was interesting, that you meet somebody who'd been working on metal for 30 years, and the guy would just be like all strong and sinewy. And then you'd meet the guy with wood, and you'd have you know big glasses and a beard, and you'd kind of be really precise, but sort of loose. And, and then you meet the ceramic people who seemed like they were sort of a little bit more zen or something like that um, and I, I don't know I, I thought it was kind of interesting that like 
that you're forming the material, but the material is also forming you in a, in a way. And so I think by branching out and into other materials, you can kind of maybe make yourself a little bit more grounded also. Ceramics is generally thought of as a sort of low form of material. Um, it's, but when it's in its best form, I think it's, it's precious enough to keep for centuries, but it's also, it, it has little value where if you drop it, it's totally gone. So it's somewhere between those two places of value. Um, and it, it requires a kind of care to it. You have to, like I said, you know, it, all it takes is slip through your hands and it's gone. But if it's done right, it can last forever. And if people take care of it, it'll last forever. There's that kind of union idea where you, where people don't have ideas, ideas have people. And so ideas can kind of, there's that mimetic um, process of an, of an idea where you can, an idea can find you and then it can sort of possess, possess you by an idea. So if your idea is, is art, um, I think that, that that idea that you, you can just find yourself making making art through life circumstances or something like that. I, I, I don't think, I never really thought of myself as an artist, I just think of myself as somebody who just works on art every day. So I don't really know that process, you know, how much of that is conscious versus un unconscious, but that's just something I like to do and, and I, I make a point to do it every day and I, I try to make incremental improvements. I definitely have a love-hate relationship with technology. I mean, I think as most people do, it's allowed me to have the life that I want to have. I mean, I, I can live somewhere that's not in the center of... In the past, I suppose you had to... If you wanted to sell art, you had to be in the middle of New York City because if people were only exposed to you in your region. So now I can live a little bit more in a far from long place and um, that's been really really nice but at the same time you know technology has its downsides technology is something that um, can waste a certain ton of time I think you can kind of go down rabbit holes and it, it can uh, so finding that balance um, has been really tough and I also believe that if you don't embrace technology to some degree it hasn't turned out very well for people historically who haven't kind of embraced technology to some degree. So it's figuring out that balance between going, okay, I'm going to be an NFT digital artist and then I'm going to do something in a traditional way and try to have people see it online. So I'm very thankful for the people who have supported me over the years, people that I've never met other than their avatar or their Facebook um, profile picture. Uh, and it's, that's been an amazing experience, and I don't know if I'd be able to have the life that I did without technology. But at the same time, it's something that uh, I'm very kind of skeptical of, so making ceramics in the way I do is kind of using uh, 3rd century BC Chinese technology, and it kind of keeps uh, a little bit of a balance between that and the fast pace Reels, Facebook algorithms world of, of the internet. So finding that balance is really tricky, but it's uh, something that I'm still struggling with and I'll probably continue to imagine. Success is just, I don't think that it's a, I don't think that it's a end point. I think that success is just marginal improvements that lead to something a little bit better. A little step by step, you just get a, a, make a little bit better pieces, a little bit better craftsmanship, a little bit better shipping time, or what, whatever it is, but just kind of coming together as, as a whole. Um, I, that's how I would define success. So making, making objects that are slightly better than, than they were before. 
I just like to make these incremental improvements. You know, I like to make more things. I like to connect with more people. Uh, just every, my life is pretty good, and it's been really nice uh, being able to develop a community online, um, develop uh, our our practice here in, in Thailand and also in the U.S. Um, I just like to be able to connect with more people, a bit bigger, bigger, better, faster, just a little bit more, you know, um, and and just slowly develop the things that I've already made and and make some new things as well, and just try to perfect my craft as much as I can. So, working on, I got a new series of monkeys that I'll hopefully be releasing fairly soon. Um, so I, I kind of have studied uh, the figure, figure sculpture for a long time and I thought it would be nice to branch into other primates and um, animals. Um, so that's a project that will be released soon and I'd like to develop Skull Series out into a lot of limited editions. I think I'd like to make more unique pieces so that um, there were more things available that were, that were very limited edition or one of a kind um, going forward rather than having like an open edition. I think I'll make limited numbers and make something that is kind of uh, unique. People can contact me. Um, I'm, I'm usually always online. Uh, people are welcome to send an email or send a DM. Um, uh, through Facebook, Instagram, anywhere. Um, I'm always open and I'm always interested in continuing the conversation. So yeah, if anybody wants to send an email um, or direct message or set up a time to call, I'm always open. <laughs>